it starts in the sort of swelling fat cell where mm -hmm. I, I'm sure your audience has heard this to, to varying degrees, but when we get fat, we can get fat through two different processes. We can either get fat through our fat cells multiplying. That's a process called hyperplasia. But mm -hmm. in that process, the fat cells typically stay quite small in size. In contrast, the way most people get fat, particularly men and particularly various ethnicities across like Asia and South Asia, especially, and uh, lesser so women and lesser so Caucasians and blacks, that's a little yeah. more hyperplasia, which is why women can be fatter than men and be healthier. Yeah. Most people, even, even though with all this, most people, most of their fat happens through hypertrophy, mm -hmm. where the number of fat cells isn't changing as much. But again, women have a little more ex proliferation than men do. But typically, as we're gaining fat in most people, it's through hypertrophy, where the the, the number of fat cells isn't changing much, but the size is. In this case, where the fat cells undergoing hypertrophy, it's, it's kind of difficult to really convey the degree of growth. The yeah. fat cell can grow more than any other cell in the body can. It yeah. can grow up to 10 to 20 times bigger than it used to be. And that yeah. creates a problem because it gets pushed further and further away from capillaries, from, yeah. from blood. And then it makes it harder and harder for the fat cell to get oxygen. And as it's getting hypoxic or, or suffocating, one of the tools it has to increase blood flow is to release pro-inflammatory proteins. Mm. In so doing, not only can it stimulate the growth of new blood vessels, but it will also act to increase the diameter, increasing blood flow. This is why if someone has an infection on their arm, it gets big and red and angry and hot yeah. because of all the inflammation increasing blood flow. So these suffocating fat cells are just belching out all of these pro-inflammatory proteins called cytokines. Yeah. C-reactive protein is one of them yeah. in an effort to try to increase its own blood flow. Unfortunately, the very steps that the big fat cell is taking to try to ensure its own survival are the very same that end up increasing inflammation through the rest of the body. Wow. And when other cells, like say the muscle, which is a cell type I studied quite a bit, when these pro-inflammatory proteins come to the muscle cell, they will directly cause insulin resistance. So yeah. inflammation is one of what I call to be one of the three primary causes of insulin resistance that you can remove yeah. any other noxious stimulus from the body. And if you just increase inflammation, that body will become insulin resistant. Yes, fat tissue is an aggressively active endocrine organ secreting all kinds of proteins and what we would call hormones into the blood all the time. If you don't, David Ludwig at Harvard published very good papers, and he and I yeah. collaborated on another one that was sort of similar, but he found from his work that you could give people two isocaloric meals, exact same number of calories, and monitor their caloric expenditure over the day. And they found that if the meal had higher carbohydrates and spiked insulin, yeah. it, it slowed metabolic rate, and, and it was that would be a state where the body it would be easier to gain weight. In contrast, the meal that had very low carbohydrates, but the exact same number of calories did not slow metabolic rate. They had a higher metabolic rate. And the yeah. difference ended up being about 300 calories wow. difference. And that's a pretty meaningful difference, especially if you extend it over months to weeks to, um, weeks to months to years. 